Hi there, Shadow C here with an update on the Serotic Bamboo Super Smelter that I've published a few weeks ago in YouTube that you guys liked a lot. So it so happens that I was watching one of his Summer Boys uh, episodes in Hermicraft the other day and he is building his own version of the Super Smelter powered by the Serotic Bamboo generators that Il Mango feature in his channel. And he came up with an amazing way of simplifying this entire thing that I did here with the hopper clocks. And what he came up with is not only a much simpler version of the farm, but also one that can be really and truly 100% efficient. And I was so amazed by what I saw in that video that I said, dude, I really need to update you guys on this because the version of the farm that I have right here, this is so much better. This is so, this is currently smelting and producing bamboo. You can see that there is no massive water stream down there as I had to do on the other, uh, the other time. These guys are 100% efficient. But in this tutorial, I am going to give you an update on how to build this much, much improved version of the super smelter for the 1.14. So if you take things into account, like how expensive it is to build, how close you would be to make this in an early game stage and how easy it is to actually go into survival and create these structures, this, in my humble opinion, is the best 1.14 super smelter that you can build in Minecraft. So stay tuned. I'm going to teach you how to build this. If you just found my channel on YouTube searching for this tutorial or something similar, I strongly encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of material about to release in the 1.14 version, a lot of new, cool, simple funds for you early gamers, you know, early game mechanics. I have a survival series that just evolved to the 1.14 series that I'm going to build a lot of cool stuff in there. And I am also a proud member of the product server who has been running nonstop for more than 100,000 Minecraft days almost five years non-stop. So that is pretty amazing. I'm building some stuff over there and getting into some slightly more technical stuff. So you might be also interested in that. Oh, and also another thing before we continue, I used to stream most of the stuff that I do in my survival series or the product server. So if you wanna hang out with me and you know watch me build and, and contraptions and builds uh, in real time, follow me on Twitch and Twitter so you get the notifications when I go online. All right, so let's start by building one of these serotic bamboo farms like this. So we're gonna put a block right here and two blocks of grass right here. Sticky piston facing this way and another sticky piston right here. Oops. Facing this way, like so. And then we're gonna place two torches underneath the blocks and blocks behind with rest and dust on top. Now if we place blocks here, we're gonna have this back and forth stuff. But if we place the regular pistons top and bottom from these things, we're gonna get the zero tick going. And so to power this off, we remove this block from this place. So we're gonna put a sticky piston right here and another block and if I get myself a lever I'm going to be able to power this on and off. There you go. And then we place bamboo here and then we have to bone mill this. Doesn't have to be the bamboo um, sapling, it has to be the, the grown bamboo. And so when we turn this on the farm is working. Excellent. And now we're going to place a block here with a regular piston facing this way. And the way Isuma changed my design here, uh, he placed an observer facing upwards, which fires every time this thing turns on and will effectively make the piston work. And so then we can enclose all of this thing and finish it off by putting some glass right here so it doesn't go too far away. So if we test this thing, it should be working. Now, this is not 100% working. So now it's working. Uh, a few minutes ago, I did another one over there. It didn't work. So if it doesn't work, just tear it down and build it uh, slightly off in the grid. And so that might be working for you. Now, 
as you can see here, all of the bamboo is uh, dropping roughly at the same size. So to catch all of them, I'm gonna put a temporary block here and grab a hopper and shift click the hopper into that block over there. And if I turn the farm again, what you're going to see is that none of the bamboo is dropping. Everything is being collected by this hopper. And this is the only way I know in 1.14.3 to make this farm 100% efficient because the original Imbango design, uh, which link in the description by the way, uh, did not work for me in 1.14.3. And I presumably didn't work by, uh, for Ixuma in 1.14.2, so that's why he did this modification with that observer over there, which actually works in 1.14.3 and hopefully for the rest of the 1.14 versions that so yeah, that you can be sure that this is going to be more or less reliable through the 1.14. And as you can see, I have almost a stack of bamboo while I was talking. So I'm using structure blocks right here to copy over the module. So I have four modules right here. So I'm going to remove these ones all, all over here. And we're gonna uh, hook all of this up into one single power source. So we're gonna go ahead and put, you know, the block of our preference behind the power ons right here and somewhere up to here we're gonna yeah we're gonna stop it right there so we're gonna put rest on so this will be a rest on line that's going all over and yes this is going to cause a very slight delay you can avoid using repeaters as i do in in my design but this is, I mean, it's, it's good enough, I don't think. So I think I can put a repeater here, right? Let's hook this up. And once they're all hooked up, we can try... Okay, so we're missing one dust over here and we can try turn it on. The next thing you want to do is to hook up each of these producers to a dropper. Now, we need one dropper per each one of these farms because otherwise they're going to get clogged with items. So the way you do this, we're gonna put two blocks right here and our dropper facing this way. And then we're gonna direct the hoppers into this guy right here. Shift click on the dropper, shift click, and then shift click again. And like so, you're gonna have, you know, all of your stuff. And as you can see, the bamboo is already getting into this guy right here. So we're gonna have some, some action. And then we're going to build a dropper clock facing sideways this time, not to the back because we don't want to interfere with the farm. So what you basically need, let me grab the, the right stuff from my inventory, I have a lot of chunk in it. So you want a, sorry, a comparator so that we measure stuff is on the dropper, a repeater to strengthen the signal, and then a block right here and we complete with redstone going there. So now we have a clock and final touch, we're gonna get all of these things getting spit out. Okay, so once you have the four of these, you know, droppers built, you want a water stream going all the way to the right and, you know, bringing all of the items into a water elevator at the edge of the contraption somewhere about right there and so the way we're gonna do this is we have each of the droppers drop directly into the water stream like so so we're gonna have something built like this and then you want a glass on each of the droppers so that they don't drop stuff you know all the way to the other side so yeah this should be good enough like like so and then each time you uh, you reach a dropper you want to enclose it you know as best as you can uh, with glass like so so there's one glass going right here and another piece of glass going right there so everything has to drop exactly inside the water stream so i'm going to repeat this same uh, practice there you go all of the four droppers are going to be dropping items exactly inside my water stream and we can also leave like one extra over here so that we can 
use our buckets in a better way. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop water right here, but you need glass now to just shut it down. You can actually cover the entire thing. And so when the stream ends right here, you remove the glass, you put a pack ties and then a slab on the upper half of this thing. And then, you know, you follow up with the stream like so. Now there could be a, a something happening to you that you could have like a water stream ending right about here and you having to place the, the ice right here. And as you can see, this is not gonna work. This is gonna ha make one of our farms to completely stop working. And this is not perfectly, you know, mathematically correct. So as to like avoid this all the time. Uh, so what you do in those cases, you can just uh, retract your ice by one block, right? Like so, and then start a new water stream right before the dropper so that you never get any of your items trapped in, in a corner of the of the stream. So, but in this case, you know, it's all right. We can just, uh, wait a second. We can continue as normal because we were lucky. And then we can put the other water stream right here. And when it ends, we can just put a slab right there and, you know, we can manage how long exactly do we want the water stream. And next up is the water elevator and feeding the array of furnaces. All right, so next we're gonna work on our water elevator so that we have a visual cue of where our items are going to be going. So this is fairly simple. You place salt sand right there and then you start, you know, placing buckets of water one at a time. So we gotta go a few blocks high, not too, not too much. I think this could suffice. Oh, I made a mistake here. You need a block right there, but we didn't break anything. So let's replace this with glass real quick. And yeah, I think this should be enough, but we're gonna go one block higher just, you know, for the sake of being absolutely sure what we're doing. Now from this side, we want another water source directing our items onto that side. So I'm gonna do it like so. And then we want to enclose the top of this because items are going to be just jumping up into the air. So as you can see, I put a, a water source right there and the items are going to be flowing up to this block right here. And that's why we need pack ties. So we replace that with pack ties right there. We extend the pipe as you can call it, and then you put a half lap over there. And then we need this to make a, a turn like pretty much like this. So the water needs to go like one block to the side and then uh, only then turn, you know, right and go and feed the furnaces. So I'm going to complete the path right here of what we have, right? And then I think at this point, I'm going to start replacing these guys with packed ice. The reason being, we want fast item moving. So uh, the way we do this, you can replace these two guys like so with packed ice. And then you gotta put a chest in the corner right here. So I put one chest facing this way and the other chest facing the other way and then cobblestone wall right here. And what this is going to do is the items are going to go one pixel over to this side because the hitbox of the chest is slightly smaller than a block. And so they're going to uh, collide with this wall and then start going this way. But notice that they're going to be just in range of the hoppers without falling inside the hopper, but still in range of a hopper to, to for the item to pick up by it. And you know, they're going to be delivered to each and every one of the furnace in an organized way from right to left. So now that we know that this is the first place where the furnace is going to be, I think I can start my furnace array from right here and I'm going to do 10 of them. You can do as much as you liked. Uh, the only thing you need to make sure of is that your generators are going to be enough for, you know, providing for all of the furnaces in your array. So I think I have 10, right? Yeah, 10 furnaces right there. And then we are going to go with the hopper line. I have a lot of hoppers lying down here for, I don't know what reason. <laughs> so let me just go here and then we can shift click into the furnace, make sure you do that so the hopper is connected and then do the hoppers on top so that you don't need to worry about that anymore. 
there you go. So here's where the items are going to flow into the hoppers and here's where the fuel is going to be going. Now, in order to make this work, you need to continue with the cobblestone wall all over up to the end of the line. And that will be right here. Now, right away, we're going to continue with the line of pack ties. Now, ideally, you probably don't need all of these pack ties. Uh, the items are going to go fast enough for, for you, you know, for them to reach the last furnace, no problem. But if you want this to be like more optimized, uh, you can do pack ties as I did right here. If you don't have a lot of pack ties, just use, you know, in the in the places where the items need to slide over, like right here, and don't worry about the rest. Now I'm gonna put the next water source right here and check when it stops. So it stops here. And now what we do is put another half slab over there and then continue with the water source and then it stops there. Now we might just make a test at this point so place a lever, where's my lever? Oh, I lost my lever. There you go. So we can place a lever right here, turn on all of the farms. And as you can see, the items are gonna be flowing. Now is the time for you to check if, you know, you have any issues, if any of these generators are not working, if the items are getting cogged, but everything seems to work as normal. And as you can see, the furnaces are going to be fed really fast actually with the bamboo. So you get about, several per per second so i think it's two per second or something like that with the four generators right here so that's pretty fast now what we need to do next is to tell all of these generators to stop whenever this hopper gets full of bamboo so we are going to get a comparator from this guy uh if i can uh, okay maybe i just need to break this guy so there you go. I don't think that affects anything, but I will just leave it right there. Uh, and we're going to compare its signal with a 15 strength signal. So I need a torch. This torch right here is providing us with a full signal and then we put redstone dust right there. And so this guy is only going to turn on when this hopper is full to the brim of items. So next we're going to build a small ladder right here to get the signal, you know, strong enough, I'm gonna place a repeater right here. There you go, like so. And then we can replace this repeater temporarily with a torch. And uh, what this is gonna do is we're gonna, it's going to provide the same power that the repeater is going to provide. And so in a case like, like this, oh, let me just repeater here. So we have the full strength coming from this place. And so we can, follow up with the rest on line all over to the back of the farm. And when you see that the line has no power, like this one, you remove it and place another repeater. There you go. And so the power will go on like this. And then you have another 15 blocks to go, but you don't need to count it. You just need to check when the power turns off, which is right here. So what I'm gonna do here is invert the signal. So I'm gonna put rest on dust over here, a torch which is going to shut down and then complete it with rest on, like so. Remove this guy and put just regular rest on dust. So what this is going to do, oh, once I replace this guy, I, I have forgotten about that. Replace this with a repeater and as you can see, the farms are going to be on until all, the, all of the furnaces have their uh, fuel replenished. And that's, that can take a while, like a few minutes. And so the rest of the mechanics is the exact same thing as we have going on in the whatever, any other version of the super smelter that I have shown you. So we're gonna go ahead and complete this. So if you haven't seen any of the other tutorials, you can keep watching the video. If you have, then maybe you already know what I'm about to do here. So I'm going to place all of the power rails that are going to consistently feed the furnaces with fuel, I mean with the items, sorry. There's a detector rail going right here, regular rail, power rail, and it'll stop, sorry, it'll stop right there. And so we need to place the chest that will fit this guy, which will go like so. And then from the detector, we're gonna do what we have done, you know, several times already. 
เล่นอีกสวิปุตอัลทอร์ชเดอร์พาวเวอร์อินดีไอเทมวิปุตเรสตอนเฮียร์เอคอมปาร์เตอร์และเดอะเรสต์ออฟเรสตอนดัสต์และอย่าลืมที่จะพาวเวอร์นี้ครับผมจะใส่ไฟตัวนี้ลงไปที่ไฟตัวนี้ทอร์ชนี่คือวิธีที่ดีที่สุดที่จะพาวเวอร์เดอะเรสต์ไปที่นี้ Now that we have, we have done that, we can place the minecart right here and check that it goes back and forth. It's not gonna go back and forth because I forgot to stop it. So <laughs> we stop the car right there. And now second try, third time's the charm. Now it goes back and forth. And as you can see, we have a small pulse extender right here, which will turn off this torch and sit the car right here so that it can get items, you know, from The chest on top, so you can extend this pulse extender with regular, more like bigger pulse extenders. And so, if you have a bigger smelter and you need a lot of items to be loaded into the cart, you can do that as well. We are going to park this guy next because we don't want a lot of lag in here. So I'm going to put a torch that is going to be lit up, and then careful not to like mess with the circuit that we already have. We're going to build a redstone cross circuit right here, so it's going to keep that thing power off. Now, when we turn on this lever, that car is going to go back and forth. That means the super smelter is active, and when we turn this off, the car is going to be parked there, which is in load mode because while the car is here, you can fill in this chest with stuff, and the car is going to take them all as much as it can until it cannot take any more items. And then we can cover the rest of this. You know, this is up to you. You can decide. You know, how are you going to do the aesthetics of this? We are about to hit the line where all of the smelters are full, and we should be seeing this stopping right away. So 64. Ah, there you go. Look at. Can you hear the silence? That is so amazing. <laughs> so now they have stopped. All of the furnaces are full of fuel, which is. When you should start using this thing, because you know, remember bamboo. Uh, you need four pieces of bamboo to smell one single item. So you need to be able to have a lot of backed up fuel so that these guys can smelt, you know, uh, uh, all the time without you know getting out of fuel while these things are producing as much as possible. And as you can see, we have some residual stuff right here. We can think of modifications to the circuit right here, and then maybe redirect this bamboo. Somewhere else where we can refeed, maybe the first furnace or something like that. But I haven't thought of that because I don't think you know losing a few bamboo pieces with this setup is a big deal. So yeah, so I just wanted to briefly comment on that. Uh, so now I'm going to go into the last part of this tutorial, which is that we need a ways of uh, get the items back from the smelter. And the way I'm going to do this is with a simple Cart system at the back of here. Again, you have seen this many, many times. You don't need to watch this if you are really familiarized with my system. But I'm just going to showcase it for you here in case this is the first time you see the tutorial. So we put the rails right here. You know, turn around, and we're gonna figure out a way. I think what I did in the other smelter was something like so. So let's work on the power. I think the best way is with some redstone blocks here and there. Now we have this thing, power, and let's see where the floor is. So if you wanna come up with the best place to put the output chest, you know you can do that. So we have, we know here where the floor level is, and now we would like the chest to be somewhere like. Like here, for example. So we're gonna put one extra block for us there, and then the output chest can live here. And now we need this guy to be all the way over this place. So we're gonna go one one extra right there, and then a few blocks where we can lift them up like so. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. So we need to go to the back with this guy. There you go. And now we're gonna go with power rail up to here. Then it's going to turn around, and then we need another power rail. 
So to make the offloading system, you're gonna put one hopper right here. I want this block right there. So we have power rail, power rail, and then unpower rail, which has mysteriously left my hotbar. There you go. And the power rail right here. And now you need to detect whenever something is in the hopper. So we're gonna put a comparator right here and a block with a torch and then another block right here and a repeater. So that is going to power the rail right there. And so when items flow through the hopper, this is going to temporarily unpower until all of them are dropped. Uh, we're gonna see that in action soon. Yeah, once I turn this thing on. But the last thing we need to do right here is to place our lever because we might want the items not to be delivered here uh, automatically but we instead we might want to stop them on demand so that we can get the XP out of the furnaces so I'm building the structure right here but more or less we want redstone going on there a torch so that it can you know turn off when I turn this on so the torch is off that's perfect and so what I'm going to do next is let me grab put rest on dust right here and going into down here. So when I power this on, the recollection system is going to be working, you know, normally. And if I turn this off, what this is gonna cause is our torch is going to turn on and nothing is going to be able to power these rails, not this logical circuit right here. So the cart will be parked. Now, if I can just demonstrate that, if I put a cart here, the car is sitting right there. If I pull this lever, it's going to go and it's going to collect items from my furnace and, you know, come back. But I want this off for now and I'm going to make a quick demonstration so that we can, you know, be done with this tutorial. So I made a nice little room here of which I have no escape, <laughs> as you can see right there. And I'm gonna try this with some iron. So let's melt a stack of iron. Let's see how long it takes for this to take care of one stack of iron. Remember, it's just one row of 10 furnaces. The stack has been loaded, so I'm going to turn this on. And we should see all of this in action real soon. And as you can see, more or less, we have about the same amount of items per smelter. Now this thing is going back and forth, so this, this the amount of items is getting, you know, uh, higher as we go through the through the smelters right there and uh, you are just hearing the serotic bamboo farms going so while these guys are working the fuel is being replenished so you have no problem with the fuel you don't need to worry about that anymore and uh, now i decided that i don't want the xp from from here because it's just one stack and it's done actually it's a, it's kind of yeah kind of close to finishing so i want to get the iron all in this chest right here so we don't need uh, the XP is just one stack, it's not gonna give us too many levels. And there you go, they're just arriving at the chest. And there you go, one stack of iron ingots. That is pretty amazing, actually. Anyways, I hope you like this tutorial. I'm gonna figure out a way of getting out of this room now that I have no powers. <laughs> but I kinda like this, this floor. So I hope you like this. If you do, leave a like, comment, or subscribe to my channel for some more Minecraft tutorials. Check my Minecraft survival series, which is now in 1.14, and also the Protect server of which sometimes I do, uh, you know, stuff on it, builds and technical stuff. Also follow me on Twitch and Twitter for my streams, which happen three times a week uh, or whenever I have time for. So yeah, see you soon. Take care.